unpredictable in terms of when it gets these things out. CBO is unpredictable. There's little you can say with certainty, but the timing here is not good. Uh, I, I don't think that you would look at this and say they're having an easy time getting the score they, they need to get. One thing not to, not to forget in this whole process is that Democrats have made their lives a lot harder by deciding they're going to make this deficit reducing over the first 10 years and the second 10 years. When Republicans who did the prescription drug benefit, they just put it all in the deficit. So it didn't matter what CBO said. It was going to cost whatever it was going to cost. And then they suppressed some other data that they didn't like. And here they're really trying on this. They're really going back and forth and saying, well, what if we tweak this? Does it cut the deficit then? And when CBO says yes, when these really stingy, parsimonious guys say, yes, we can say with as much certainty as we can muster that that will work, it will cut costs, it will make the system cheaper, then the Democrats can go forward. And, you know, I don't think they get a lot of credit for that, but it's made their lives a lot more difficult. It's easy to do this stuff. You can just throw it onto the deficit. Ezra Klein, staff writer for The Washington Post, uh, and our go-to guy in understanding the fine print here. Ezra, thank you so much for your time tonight. Really thank appreciate you. it. Okay, Virginia's Republican Attorney General uh, is threatening to do something in response to the imminent passage of health reform that is such a memorable thing that I predict actions like his will one day be referred to as pulling a Cuccinelli. Also, um, anti-abortion Congressman ba Bart Stupak is not going to be able to stop health reform like he has been threatening, but he is now picking a fight with nuns. Thousands and thousands and thousands of nuns. My money in this fight is on the nuns. That's next. As of today, the people of Virginia can rest assured that once health reform passes Congress and is signed into law by the president, they will have a tireless advocate fighting against their ability to benefit from it. A spokesman for Virginia's attorney general confirmed to the Washington Post today that the attorney general of the great state of Virginia will definitely sue the federal government to try to stop health reform. Once we have health reform, that is. You may be asking yourself, on what legal grounds will Virginia's Attorney General mount this heroic challenge against health reform? Uh, that is a good question, particularly because the Attorney General doesn't seem to know. His spokesman, quote, would provide no details to the Washington Post about this today, saying only that the plan is, quote, still being worked out. Sure, launching a vague, preemptive assault on the legality of insurance reforms might seem like a strange or even politically ill-advised move for a state attorney, attorney general to make. But I got to tell you, this is not really about health reform. This is really about Virginia. This is not even the second, not even the third most bizarre thing to happen in the politics of the state of Virginia since their new slate of Republican state officials took office this year. There is a complete disconnect between what Governor Bob McDonnell and his attorney general, Ken Cuccinelli, have actually done in the state of Virginia since they took office and the way that the national media talks about Governor Mc Bob McDonnell as if he has some sort of mainstream political future. Under Bob McDonnell and Ken Cuccinelli, Virginia is being remade into a Jesse Helmsistan, and they're doing it fast. About a week after Governor McDonnell debuted as the fresh face of the Republican Party by giving the televised response to President Obama's State of the Union address, the gov that, that same governor, McDonnell, uh, rescinded the state's executive order banning discrimination against state workers. He rescinded it. He actually rescinded the state's old anti-discrimination order and replaced it with a new one that explicitly did not protect gay people from discrimination. So in other words, in his first month in office, Governor Bob McDonnell took overt steps to make it legal for state government offices to fire people in Virginia just because those people are gay. Then Attorney General Ken Cuccinelli, Robin to Mr. McDonald's Batman, uh, followed up with a directive to Virginia's public universities. Attorney General Cuccinelli sent a letter to each school telling them they could not legally prohibit discrimination against gay people, and he said they should change their existing non-discrimination policies if the ones they had did protect gay people. How's that small government thing working out for you, Virginia? The dynamic duo of Jesse Helmsistan uh, also moved bravely to stop a plan that had been in the works to allow state employees, same-sex partners, to get health insurance. Of course, since it's now legal to fire anyone who works for the state of Virginia simply because they are gay, maybe that whole health insurance thing was vestigial anyway. Uh, then, of course, came the birther tape, 
a piece of audio reportedly recorded between Election Day and Inauguration Day of Virginia's Attorney General siding with the President Obama is secretly foreign, show us the birth certificate or the Tate's folks. What can we do about Obama and the birth certificate thing? Is that's... It will, it'll get tested, in my view, when, some, when he signs a law and someone is convicted of violating it, and one of their defenses will be, it's not a law. Is someone qualified to be Is that something you can do as Attorney General? Can you, like, make, can you do that or something? Well, only if there's a conflict where we're suing the federal government for a law they passed, so it's possible. Because we're talking about the possibility that he was but not it, born in America. Right, but at the same time, under Rule 11, Federal Rule 11, we got to have proof of it. How can we get proof? Well, <laughs> I mean, that's a good question. Uh, not one I've thought a lot about because it hasn't been part of my campaign, but I mean, someone's going to have to come forward with nailed down testimony that he was born in place B, wherever that is. You know, there's speculations can now. Um, and that doesn't seem beyond the realm of possibility. That doesn't seem beyond the... The single most incredible thing about this story is not the fact that the Attorney General of Virginia said all that on tape. Um, it's what he said this week after this tape was released. Mr. Cuccinelli put out a statement that said, quote, I absolutely believe that President Obama was born in the United States. I don't buy into the claims that he wasn't. On the recording, I was asked a hypothetical legal question, and I gave a hypothetical legal answer in response. I was just hypothetically wholeheartedly agreeing with the conspiracy theory and explaining exactly how I might bring the cause of exposing the president's secret foreign birthplace into the public policy agenda of the state of Virginia. Just hypothetically. Like you do. Speculation is Ken now. Um, and that doesn't seem beyond the realm of possibility. Incredibly, when the Virginia Attorney General put out his statement after this came out, uh, saying he didn't really mean that birther thing, he was totally caught on tape saying, incredibly, his denial is how it was reported nationally. Nationally, the reporting was like, oh, he says he didn't really mean it. Okay, case closed. It's the same thing with McDonald and Cuccinelli's move to make it legal to fire state workers in Virginia just because they're gay. They rescinded the old executive order that prohibited that kind of discrimination by law. They put in effect a new executive order which says, by law, it is legal to fire people for being gay in the state of Virginia. Then when, when students in Virginia protested, Governor McDonald did not change the law back he just put out an executive directive saying, oh, no, 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 don't get me wrong. I hate discrimination, which is neat, but which doesn't change the law back to what it was before Virginia voters maybe accidentally elected Jesse Helms and son to make their state a little 21st century pilot project in theocracy. Who would you bet on in a fight if the fight is between Congressman Bart Stupak on one side and 59,000 nuns on the other side. It's not hypothetical, actually, because that is the fight that Bart Stupak decided to pick today. Him versus 59,000 nuns. The leaders of nearly 60 Catholic religious orders representing, say it with me now, 59,000 nuns sent a letter to House lawmakers today urging them to pass the Senate health reform bill, despite Bart Stupak's claims that the bill would somehow provide public funding for abortion. The bill will not do that. The nuns' letter says, quote, despite false claims to the contrary, the Senate bill will not provide taxpayer funding for elective abortions. It will uphold longstanding conscience protections, and it will make historic new investments in support of pregnant women. This is the real pro-life stance, and we, as Catholics, are all for it. So if 59,000 nuns figuratively threatened to wrap your knuckles with a ruler, what would you do? If you are Congressman Bart Stupak, you would respond by insulting nuns everywhere. Here's what Congressman Stupak said to Fox News about this today, quote, when I'm drafting right to life language, I don't call up the nuns. Fox quoted Congressman Stupak as saying that instead of calling up the nuns, he prefers to consult with bishops and also with the super right-wing evangelical group Focus on the Family. 
Congressman Stupak's quest to use the issue of abortion to stop health reform is now winding down. Uh, his uh, odd shot at nuns today came after a long day of bad news for this quest of his. Politico reported today that anti-abortion Democratic Congressman James Oberstar of Minnesota will now support the Senate version of health care reform, saying he took another look at the abortion language of the Senate bill and realized, quote, on balance, it does what we need to do. Congressman Oberstar joins a growing list of anti-abortion Democrats who used to support Bart Stupak, who voted for his anti-abortion language before, but who say also the Senate language really does ban federal funding for abortion. They say there's no reason to vote now against health reform on anti-abortion grounds, no matter what Bart Stupak says. The problem that Bart Stupak says he wants to fix, in other words, is one that other anti-abortion members of Congress say doesn't exist. The list of anti-abortion members of Congress who supported Congressman Stupak in the past but who now say that he is wrong about this also includes Virginia's Tom Periello, Pennsylvania's Jason Altmeyer, and Stupak's own colleague from Michigan.